to the Sabbath School lesson with the General Conference. I greet you here from our offices in Cedartown, Georgia, in the United States. Pastor Larry Watts is absent. He is away on a mission trip in West Africa. Next to me is Pastor Francis Douglas Francis, our General Conference Treasurer and Chief Financial Officer. Very happy. Welcome, brother. I will be your host for today, Idel Suarez, and it is our joy to share the Sabbath School with you. I've just returned from a trip to the countries of that speak Arabic, and we were able to study with a number of Arabs that are very interested in the message. Let's pray for the work in Arabia and in other Arab countries. The title of our Sabbath school is the first and last, the beginning and the end, and it is the Sabbath school for the Sabbath, June 29, 2013. And before we start with the lesson, let's have a silent prayer. Last week we studied about the Rock of Ages, yes. that Jesus is the rock, it was that spiritual rock from which all of Israel drank water. And for this Sabbath we have that Jesus is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There's a wonderful reference here from God's amazing grace that says that Jesus was the light of his people, the light of the world, and before he came to earth in the form of humanity, the first gleam of light that pierced the gloom in which sin had wrapped the world, came from Christ, and from Him has come every ray of heaven's brightness that has fallen upon the inhabitants of the earth. In the plan of redemption, Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Alpha and Omega being the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Our first subtitle is Christ for the Salvation of Every Soul. Question number one says, what does the word mean when it says that Jesus is the beginning and the end of our salvation? What would you comment about that, Pastor Francis? Actually, the Alpha and Omega, the words we find in Revelation, book of Revelation. So, he is the beginning and the end. But when we talk about uh, God, we talk about infinity. There's no end for him. There's no beginning for him. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, this is when we go through the lessons, we find that beginning and end not referring only to him. It is for our faith, our life, and everything. He is the beginning and he is the end of our every activity, every thought, every deed. So, it has a deeper meaning when you say Alpha and Omega, because God is the priority of our life. That's right. He is the beginning and the end because He helps us yes. every step of the way. And not just the beginning and the end, but every step in between. God takes the first step and He helps us to take the following steps with Him. There are two misconceptions that come up in the note, which I thought were very important, let no man present the idea that man has little or nothing to do in the great work of overcoming. Many say, Lord, Lord, but they will not find salvation in the day of Christ in the end. Neither say that after you have done all you can on your part, Jesus will help you. No, we are to work with him from beginning to end. He is the one that moves us. We are to be a co-laborer with Christ. We go to the second subtitle, Christ in our congregations. Do we glorify our Savior in our congregations and give Him the first place in our worship services? I think this is a personal question. Yes. And Psalms 111 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, I will praise the Lord with all my heart and the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. So, do you praise the Lord in the congregation, in the services? But I think uh, this is, uh, this gives a little deeper meaning to that. Mm -hmm. Once again, the word priority I like to use here. Mm -hmm. 
are we going to give priority to Jesus in our the congregational gatherings or in our worships? We are, are we going to give priority to him or are we going to shine by ourselves or a group of people? Like sometimes I have no, noticed the young people, they like to come and sing in the front. But it should be for the glory of God, not to glorify them. So I always remind them that before they start doing that. So this has partly to do with that. We have to give priority to Jesus. We have to give priority to God and honor Him and respect Him and have reverence in Him. Like, you know, we have to experience His presence in the congregation. So this is what David is telling in Psalms 111.1. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the Akhari and in the congregation. With whole heart, not partially. That's right. When you wake up in the morning, <coughs> what is your first thought? Who do you give time to? Do you get out of your bed and kneel down and pray, give thanks to God for life, for health, for liberty, for the opportunity to serve Him? May Jesus be the priority in our life. We want to highlight one line here in the note. And it says, it is because you do not see that Christ is the first, the last, and the best. I like that. Even I highlighted the same. And the best. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the very author and finisher of our faith. So Jesus is not only to be the first and, and the second and the last, but he's to be the best in everything we give priority. The next subtitle is Christ in our lives. Question number three of our Sabbath school, dated for June 29, 2013, and it reads, What experience of the Apostle Paul will be made by all who inherit the eternal kingdom? What experience? I think there are many comments here from the Apostle Paul where he says, I live by faith, Jesus loves me, he died for me, I am daily crucified with Christ, He's really trying to give the idea that Christ has to be everything in our lives. Christ has to do with everything we do and say and think. And we must make Christ the abiding presence, the controlling force of our thoughts and ideas and our actions. We must live for Him, like to be in love. When a young man falls in love, he can't and he's in He's in love with this young girl. He cannot take her out of his thoughts. He's thinking of her every, every moment. moment. Yes, he wants to write to her. He wants to talk her. He wants to sit by her side. When we have the first love, we want to talk with God. We want to write to God. We want to be with God. We want to give Him the glory. We want to be with Jesus. Self is dead, but Christ is a living Savior. I have a, another thought about Paul, when he is mentioning in Galatians, yes. he lived along with the disciples who associated, who lived, who shared with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I feel Paul, when he hears these stories about the company of Jesus with his disciples, he is missing those very much. He's feel, he feels, oh, I could not have that opportunity to spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then, spiritually, he is trying to spend time with Jesus. So this is the very reason that he is talking spiritually. So that experience of Paul, the spiritual union with Jesus, the time he spends with Jesus spiritually, that helps us in our life. Because we physically, we don't have Jesus with us, but spiritually, we have him. Amen. It is true that Paul did not have the privilege of being with Jesus those three and a half years, but he had another privilege, and that was to be in Arabia with Jesus for three years. Jesus appeared to him not just once and taught him many things, <clears throat> because when he writes to the Corinthians, he says, I learned of the Lord about the Lord's Supper. It was Jesus himself that taught him many things, and Luke learned from him and wrote. And so the spiritual experience is, is very important for us today, as, as Pastor Francis has highlighted. Question number four says, why is it so important to have the Lord's approval in everything we do? Why is it important to have the Lord's approval? Because we know God does everything for our own good. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes as humans we, we feel that, oh God, why you did it to me, this to me? But the end product or the end result is always happiness and joy and comfort and peace. But not immediately. We will not feel that. We will not realize. We will not understand that. But because of that, we have to wait for God's approval. And we have to, once again, I like to use the word priority. If we use God as our priority in our life, I think we will not have any failures. Thank you, brother. We need to make a difference between salvation and reward. Salvation is a free gift, but reward is based on works. It's based on the good things you have done. God keeps a record of all the good things you do here on earth. And when you get to heaven, He will give you a reward based on your good works on earth. But salvation is a gift of God by grace. And the Apostle Paul in Ephesians and Colossians stresses we need to do everything from the heart, yes. heartedly, as to the Lord. So, we want the Lord's approval because we serve Him and we love Him. And He enjoys knowing that we're doing right. And our reward also depends on it. Question number five. What place do we need to give to Jesus if we want His blessings in our home? We've stated this and we will repeat it. He needs to be the first and He needs to be the best. Yes. We need to imitate Him in everything. And there's an advice here for women to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord. And everything that is not against the law of God, a wife is to be submitted to her husband. The husband is to love his wife no matter what she does, whether she's good or whether she's bad. <clears throat> he needs to love her. If not, then he will not earn her respect in order for her to submit to him. And children, it is a blessing to obey your parents in the Lord. And everything they say that's according to God's law, if they say something that's against God's law, then it cannot be. We need to go to the next subtitle, Christ in Education. Question number six. Who alone should be our teacher as the source of all wisdom? What would you say, Pastor Francis? Who alone should be our teacher as the source of all wisdom? It reminds me in the book of Education, how Sister White beautifully mentions Adam and Eve learned from Jesus yes. in the garden. So, likewise, today, spiritually, we have an opportunity to learn from Jesus. As you mentioned, Paul learned many things from Christ. So, likewise, spiritually, we also have the opportunity to learn from Christ. But, once again, we have to keep Him as our priority. If Jesus comes first in our life, as the title of this lesson says, then it is easy for us to learn from Him. Because He is our first teacher. He is our first love. He is our first in every activity in our life. So that is the most important thing. Here, Paul again and again he mentioned, but here I can see John is talking about it. John in Revelation he talks about it. And before that we saw Paul is talking about it. Basically I can see or every disciple, every follower of God has to keep Jesus as our priority. Amen. Let's make a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence is the ability to gain knowledge and wisdom is the ability to discern and to apply that knowledge. There are people who are very intelligent. They can read a book very fast, they understand it, they can quote it. But it's another thing to be wise, to know what to do. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. True wisdom only comes from the study of God's words. The study of the words of Jesus, of His Gospel. And that's why I think Paul says that Jesus is the wisdom of God. The note says, in the presence of such a teacher with such opportunity for divine education, what worse than folly is it to seek an education apart from Him? To seek to be wise apart from wisdom. 
You cannot be wise apart from wisdom. Jesus is the true wisdom. He's a source. He is the source. I'm very sad that many young people want to go to university and then they neglect the study of the Bible while they are in university. If you are in university, if you're in a technical college, you need to spend more time studying the Word of God. And you cannot forsake that study, otherwise you will lose the true wisdom that only comes from above. We go to the last uh, question. And it says, Christ in missionary work. What must be the theme of all teaching and of all evangelism for the salvation of souls? What should be the theme? It's Christ. That's right. It's Christ, because Christ is a center of everything. Christ is a center of our life, Christ is a center of our education, Christ is a center of our knowledge, wisdom, and everything. Paul says that I determined not to know anything among you but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's interesting that he writes that to the Corinthians. Yes. In Athens, where he had been before he went to Corinth, he had been in Athens, the capital of Greece today, and there he used a lot of logic, a lot of philosophy. He gained a few souls. But in Corinth, he preached just Christ. And many Jews were converted to Christianity. And many Gentiles came to the gospel. And it is advantageous for us to speak of Christ crucified, Christ risen, Christ ascended into heaven, Christ coming again. And this will gladden the people. Sister White wrote that the mind of the minister should dwell upon these things so that the people will fall in love with Christ, with Jesus. All the great truths of Scripture center in Christ, rightly understood, all lead to Him. Let Christ be presented as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the great plan of redemption. Present to the people such subjects as will strengthen their confidence in God and in His Word and lead them to investigate its teaching for themselves. You need to have your own personal experience with Jesus. Maybe based on small incidents that you lose something, you pray to God, please, I need to find it. Like that woman that lost that coin and she struggled and she broomed the whole she cleaned the whole house, the floor, until she found that lost coin. And she was so thankful that she, she called her friends. You know, that coin is a symbol of every person who is lost, whose image of God has been distorted. And it is Jesus, through His church, that is sweeping and looking for those that are lost to bring them again into the image of God. And God wants to create His character in your heart, in your mind. From the inside out, God works. He implants into us the Spirit of Jesus. That Jesus will be the most important and the sweetest to us, like honey, David says. And I pray that we may go through this lesson and make Jesus in our lives the first and the last, the beginning and the end. As Pastor Francis has repeated, the priority, the best in our lives. If there's several things to do, you need to give priority to Christ. Always start the day with prayer, with morning worship. Always end the day with morning worship. Always pray before your meals. Always take time to read the scriptures on a daily basis. You don't have to read many chapters, but you do need to read at least one verse or part of a verse and meditate upon it. And you can gain more knowledge from meditating upon a few words of scripture sometimes in just reading through, speed reading through uh, chapters and, and books of the Bible. We need to understand that Christ is in every single word of the Bible and He can be seen in every single evidence of creation, yes. of nature. And God wants to intervene in your life through His providence. Some last words, Pastor Francis, before um, we close. Yes, actually it's the white says Every person, every Christian should spend time uh, reading about Christ's life and meditate about Christ's life on this earth every day. Yes. So that is very important. Uh, so that that gives more life because the, this lesson begins with uh, 
and light given to us through Christ. So I like to end saying we have to experience that light in our lives every day. Amen. May it be so. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Remember us in your prayers. We remember you. And remember all the missionaries that are sharing the gospel. And may this Sabbath school lesson be a blessing for you and your friends and family. God bless you and have a blessed Sabbath. Thank you very much.